Hi, welcome back. The biggest shortfalls of a desktop computer is that you don't have a built-in webcam when you mostly need it. And most of the monitors you get in the market, unfortunately, don't come with one. I had to do a Zoom video call and I wasn't really looking to invest in a webcam. Well, it turns out that all you need is a home security camera that has RTSP streaming. This TP-Link Tapo has RTSP streaming and it's a super cheap security camera that can also be used for other purposes like video calls on Zoom or Teams and I can show you how that will work as we go along. So this comes with this nice packaging, blue and white, has a full HD video definition, will do night vision up to 30 feet and can support memory cards up to 128 GB. Really nice. It runs on a TP-Link app it's called the Tapo app and it's supposed to be very intuitive. So this camera depends solely on its application to kind of make it work right and you can do a lot of things with the application right from record the video, play it back, you know pan and scan a lot of other things sharing the stream with somebody else and really good features too i mean imagine having to share the live stream with somebody else it's also got a sd card slot under the camera lens and it's got a 360 vertical field of view as well as a 100 and 114 degree angle which can be used to tilt it up and down so full hd again has a two-way microphone built in like i said supports Wi-Fi, B, G, and N, and night vision up to 30 feet. So it's got to have all the mounting screws and adapter inside. Let's quickly unbox this and have a look. So inside the box, I can see that there's a DC power adapter. There are some paper manuals inside, some quick start guides, and some warning papers. This camera is for indoor use, so you can't, it's not water resistant or waterproof. It's also got a template which they've given. The adapter looks nice and long. Standard adapter. I think the wire is at least three meters long, two to three meters long. So, yep, as they mentioned, there are mounting screws provided. This can be vertically mounted on your ceiling. Get the camera out. So this is the Tapo and it really looks like a small droid. Seriously. It's a really good looking security camera, both from the front, back and the sides. I mean, just look at it. And it really looks good on your hand too. At the bottom, you have these mounting options for the ceiling. This is a tabletop mount anyways. And the build quality is really amazing for this camera. Hardly costs you about 2300 on Amazon. And with the capabilities it's got, it's a really value for money camera. So let's go ahead and power this on. I just tried putting the adapter on, it just gave some lights. Then I realized it does take some time. So when you put it on for the first time, you have these LEDs that flash in front of it. Three of them. The one on the top is just your indication that the camera is actually working. That can be switched off. It takes a while for it to start reacting. So just be patient.
and once it does that it starts panning and scanning all over the place it's almost as if it's looking at its surroundings And that's a close-up of the lens. There's an indication LED there. You can turn it off. The blinking mode indicates it's ready to pair. Now let's go back to the application. So this is available both on Apple and Android devices. It's about 40 MB the app. So once you download it, just make sure you sign up with the account details. Just create an account, straightforward process, putting your email addresses and all that. It should be good to go. So inside, you will find that there's a provision to add the camera and your camera is listed there, it's the C200. So the app can do a lot of other things just apart from this camera. So yeah, if the camera is in blinking mode, that means the camera is ready to be installed. To connect the camera all you need to do is go to your Wi-Fi settings and search for the Tapo camera and you will see that the camera itself is having a you know, Wi-Fi beacon on. Connect to it so that it pairs with your app first. Once you do that you can actually pair it back to your Wi-Fi, home Wi-Fi. Once you put the passwords in and then it's a matter of just naming the camera and putting it on a location that you're going to use it on. So I'm selecting living room. So the app does suggest you to add a memory card so that it records locally as well in case you don't have access to the app or something happens to it. So once it's complete, that's about it. You should be good to use your application. So let's go back to the app and see how well it works. And yes, you can add up to 32 cameras in the application. And the app is very intuitive, so you can just add pan, tilt, or scan, or do whatever you want to look at your surroundings as, as, as much as your camera can go. And the video quality looks very decent. I mean, this is uh, low light. It's just got one bulb in that room, but it's quite far off, but it's still picking up a lot of detail in that video. You can adjust the amount of pan and scan you want to do. And you also have this option to add marks on the application so that you have some preset areas that you want to scroll to immediately without doing it manually. That's available. So there are also some other settings, like I mentioned, you can turn off the indicator LED in case you think somebody's going to notice the camera. You can disable alerts if you don't want any alerts. And one of the good things that this application can do is record sounds from the built-in microphone. So basically you can be anywhere else and still 
be able to hear what's going on next to the camera. Here's a sample clip from the recording of the video. So this was recorded on the memory card. Now, going back to the case where I wanted to use this as a webcam, all you need to do is use an application like ManyCam or AltaCam that will let you use the RTSP stream from this camera. It's a very simple process. It seems complicated at the beginning, but very simple. So once you install ManyCam or AltaCam, you just need to go to settings and add a new camera. Give a name, whatever you want and the URL. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. All you need to do is just go back to your TP-Link app, go to the camera settings, go to the advanced settings. So once you go to advanced settings, you should get an option to add a username and ID. All you need to do here is create a username and an ID of your choice and just make sure you remember it. That's it. So once you do that, all you need to know do is to set up your camera as a webcam in front of your desktop. Go back to the ManyCam app and add an IP camera under which you'll see a URL. That URL has a format which I've mentioned right above. So you need to add the same username and password as you've done in the application. Find out what IP address was assigned to this router on your router page. Add that IP address here and say OK. Once you're done, go to IP cameras and click on the name you've given for this camera. Many cams will pick it up. And this is the live stream. There's also an option to enable the virtual webcam option that that's always clicked on by default. Now the point with ManyCam is it's not free. It doesn't work really great. It keeps asking you to go for the paid version. So I found another app called AlterCam, which lets you do it for free. Now in both cases, if you open AlterCam, you will see that it's pulling out a live stream from ManyCam. So make sure that any application you use is closed thoroughly and you stop so that the right app you want has access to this camera. Now it's a matter of time to just open Zoom and find out if this camera will show up as a webcam. So yes, it, it, it works great. I mean, this is the ManyCam interface. I'm just opening Zoom and I started a new meeting and the camera seems to be added. It might not work simply because you wouldn't have started the live stream. So some of the apps like AltaCam would like you to go in there and say start the camera so that it starts working right from there. You can't close the application, but it'll be running in the background. But there's a lot of lag. I saw that there's a severe lag in terms of the video and the audio, audio output. So don't be surprised. Camera quality was very average on AltaCam, but better on ManyCam. And that's how you use a security camera with RTSP streaming for your video conferences or any other purpose that you need on your desktop. I hope you found the video useful. If you did, please hit the like button and do consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon. I'll leave links in the description below in case you're looking at this camera. Once again, thank you so much for watching our tech. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.